But did he have any other weapons that would be interesting? Oh, it's called a shower, man. He's got an axe, but it has a pretty high melee requirement. So maybe a little later. No books, I think, right? You don't have any books? Oh, it's called a shower. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. We got it. Yeah, no books or anything, so we can't skill up easily. You think we should go up to the hazmat suit, guys? What do you think they'd think of what I look like? I mean, we're going full Halloween now with our outfit. <laughs> I think we should have, like, a bag over our head if we we're really honest with ourselves. Big lumpy trench coat and a bag over her head. That's probably a more appropriate outfit. Although, what would get you locked up more? What we look like? Or... Um... That. Alright, let's go talk to... Uh, what is his name? Chunk? Or whatever. You... You stay back now. I, I don't know what you are, but... You, you best go back to wherever it is you came from, huh? I'm serious now. I'm gonna see LaCroix. Mr. LaCroix's got no appointment scheduled for any gargoyles. Uh, you best get going before I call for backup. Or a tabloid. <sighs> Alright, so apparently... We have to go through a uh, back entrance or some nonsense. We're not wanted here. What's the way that we're supposed to go? It's been a long time since I've been Nosferatu, so I don't really know the best approach here. Because if he doesn't let you in, you don't get in. So there has to be a way for our Nosferatu to get in this place. a long time since I played. Alright, we'll go in the back entrance, I guess. There might be a back entrance. I don't really know. Maybe there's a sewer entrance? The only manhole I know about is over this way. Alright, we'll try that on for size. Clearly, going in the front entrance is not the way to go. Which I'm fine with. Uh, you know, it's just more of the interesting design of this game and the fact that they revolve it around the fact that we don't look all that nice. Okay. Let's go into the sewers. Where we belong. Alright. This will eventually be our hideout, I believe. No, no, I don't want this one. F might be it, though. Kind of wish there was another map for me to look at. So I knew what was what. Because that map is to get... This is like the fast travel map. I just wanted to be doubly sure here. But I bet you... Yeah, here we go. Maybe D? Hold on. What's five? No, five is confession. No, we're down... We want six. Yeah, F. F will get us where we want. All right. I'm going to have to learn the downtown layout. Especially the sewer layout. Um, I remember the Santa Monica layout pretty well of the sewers, but it's pretty simple. Downtown layout, I don't really remember very well, and as we get further into the game, the more I'm not going to remember the sewer layout, because typically I go Venture and Venture you don't need to go in the sewers. Once you get past Santa Monica, you really don't need to go in the sewers, at least I don't think so. So I thought there would be a back way in. There was. So, sewer to bar... Where does this go? 
Ah, so these, that's the locked door we couldn't get in before. So maybe we'll get that, like a key to that or something. All right, well. It seems like a very uh, obvious security breach for the prince. But maybe he has some kind of camera system or whatever to let him know somebody's coming up so he can prepare. But, um... Ooh. That looks familiar. Got to look at all the art and stuff. All right. Hello, Mr. Prince. There you are. I was informed of your presence in the building. Since you're here, I'll take the liberty of assuming you've destroyed the warehouse. This is correct, yes? Yes. Most excellent. I had no doubt you'd prove my decision a prudent one. I trust you encountered no impediments to your progress on account of my personnel. Let's face facts, Prince. You sent me on that mission hoping I'd get killed. Fortunately for you, I'm Nosferatu, and I really didn't have to work all that hard for it. Um... I am not going to sell out Mercurio. I'm going to say the Santa Monica 600 are a little two-faced. You get a little bit of a pun in there, uh, but that's about it. A taste of what's to come. <laughs> you have no idea. You've done well, circumstances being what they were. I will admit, not many in your position would have overcome such a trial. But don't misunderstand me. It was no fool's errand. You may yet prove to be a genuine asset. It's a bit disturbing the lack Liar. of talent within this organization as of late. Tell me, what would you say to doing a bit of reconnaissance for me? I'd say I'm pretty good at that. Um... What's in it for me? Don't be so hasty to inflate your own worth. You've succeeded once. Very admirable. But in the grand scheme of it all, an infant's stride of progress. If you're looking to make a name for yourself, listen very carefully. There have been whispers, rumors spreading around the kindred community concerning the Elizabeth Dane, the cargo ship that was towed into port recently. Have you heard of it? Uh, no, I haven't. The Dane was found out at sea. The reports say it was without crew, but they have yet to report a fate of said crew. The police are investigating the Dane as we speak. Even the Nosferatu have little information on what's been found. However, the reason the ship has caused such speculation is because it was transporting an object called the Ankaran Sarcophagus. Now, I'm not one to predicate a decision based on conjecture, so what I need is fact. And more importantly, I need evidence that the occurrences on the Dane were not supernatural in nature, and in no way relate to this Ankaran sarcophagus. Okay. What do you want me to do? You have three objectives. One, I want you to examine the sarcophagus for anything unusual. You may sense something peculiar about the sarcophagus. In fact, many kindred in the city have reported an uneasiness in the air since the Dane's arrival. Do yeah. not, under any circumstances, open the Ankaran sarcophagus. Secondly, the police have begun their investigation. Find out what they have concluded thus far. Thirdly, take the cargo manifest for the ship. I want to find out what else it was carrying. The last thing we want is police aware of our existence. So, be careful what you do in front of them. And unlike the warehouse, you cannot wholesale slaughter a ship full of lawmen without consequences. Is this understood? Uh-huh. Good. Oh, and it has come to my attention that you had an encounter with Nines Rodriguez earlier. The man so does love to throw that cretinous charm of his brashly about. What exactly did Mr. Rodriguez say? Well, we get one choice here. I see. Then, you should go humor the by-the-numbers rhetoric he so desperately aching to spew. Do I have to? Oh, please, before the chance of fascist oppressor from that dive of theirs clog the air and choke the local kine. Fine. Give the Anarch community my regards. Okay. 
Alright. Alright, so we've got our things to do. I... First, going to get ourselves a quick save. And then I might check on a few things. I might ignore this quest for a little while. Uh, first off, we have a bunch of side quests to do in the downtown area. Hello, Leo. Do I get a key here yet, Mr. Prince? No. What a dick. Alright. Back to the sewers. I want to check up on some things in Santa Monica, though. I want to talk to Bertram Tong again, see if he has that quest he mentioned earlier. Uh, I also want to check on my residence, see if there's anything waiting for me email-wise. So... A little bit of sound effects there that uh, I wasn't sure what they were at first. Okay. I think we want G to get to my apartment, but I also want to go and talk to Bertram Tong. I think I want to do that first, but let's go this way. I think B is what we want. If he doesn't have anything for me, that's fine. I still want to check on my apartment to see if there's anything there. And then we'll work worry about downtown. There's a lot of things we can do in downtown. Side quests and what have you. I'm not sure in what order I'd want to do them in. I guess we'll just kind of play it by ear. What do you need? Um. Oh. That was just silly vampire politicking, fledgling. No more. You get used to that kind of thing. Oh, uh, I had my suspicions. What an interesting specimen. Probably shouldn't have told him that, but... Pain in my dead ass, for sure. Not a lot more vicious than a pain in your ass. <laughs> of course it did. As if vampires and women both weren't insecure enough. Oh -ho! Get them together in one Malkavian body. And look what happens. Yeah, no kidding. Now that the Camarilla's moved into L.A., Therese wants the title of Prince of Santa Monica. I guess she saw me as a threat. Funny thing is, I could care less. Um, in I would the job? be the Prince of Terra Haute. I leave that headache to the Ventru. Besides, there's only like four vampires in all of Santa Monica. <laughs> Some kingdom. All right. What? Uh, let's like see. What? Okay. But I still can't ask him for that quest Sheila. he mentioned. Okay, that's fine with me then. And his computer, although it is, you know, they did think about it. They, it does have a wire. It's a very long wire, but it does have some connection, right? Fortunately, we can't check his email right now. Okay. So that was a dead end. That's fine. Let's go to the apartment, see what's there. And if, if there's nothing there, then there's nothing else in Santa Monica because we've done absolutely every side quest. Um, you're a lowly rodent. You don't get a key. Yeah, you're right. It just makes me wonder what that door is for, though. Like... The sooner we get our patent down the downtown area, the, the happier I'll be. Because we don't have to crawl all the way back to Santa Monica to get any information.
Might stop in at Trip too, just to see if there's anything going on there. Do so many callers. Yeah, that could be true, Leo. But um, Bertram Tongue did say he had a quest for me. If he talk, if I talk to him later, but it might be one of those situations where I have to do something else first, which more than likely is true. All right, well, no new emails, so looks like we're gonna have to wait. Should probably check my mailbox, but I'm pretty sure there's nothing in there. Oh. All right. We're gonna go talk to Trip. Although I don't think his inventory really gets upgraded over time. It's possible it does, but I have a feeling it doesn't. We'll check it nonetheless. Hello, Trip. Thanks for coming back. What you need? Um, like to buy something? All right. Here's what we got today. So yeah, pretty much the same things. I mean, we could buy the the you want to shoot things because honestly, eventually we're going to want to. So yeah, what the hell? Not like it hurts. $54 in the grand scheme of things isn't that much. That. Yeah. Read. That should only improve us one stat. Firearms. We're going to eventually go and buy another one and get another stat from that. All right. Well, we've bought a couple things now. Are we still a Rockefeller, according to the inventory? Let's see what it has to say. Looks like your wallet is set for a night out on the town. 422. Depends on how expensive of a night out on the town you want. I uh, regret not robbing that dude. That, that rich dude that was there. I'm pretty sure I could have used my Intimidate the first time I talked to him to, like, steal his watch or some, something like that, but... Um, fortunately, we only had one chance to talk to him, and I didn't realize that was the case. Oh, well. Find one of these fast travel maps. I think there's only one, possibly in each sewer, so... This is it. Uh, downtown. All right, we're gonna be hanging here for a while. I don't remember how far into the game you have to get before you get the quest that gets you into this uh, downtown pad, but we'll do what we can. Okay, so where do we want to go? We could go straight to the last round. So we are there. So we actually have to go back the other way. So we want... Last round should be... Nine. So we want either H or I. I think I'm going to go I because I want to talk to that one regent dude. Because we have that follow-up. So I it is. Oh, there's a map right here. Eye is up this way. There it is. You get there's clubs where you can get four drinks with that. Yeah. that dude's pad was right here. Am I misremembering that? Oh well. We'll go to the last round. It might be a little bit more that way. Here's the last round right here, so we're not that far away. Doesn't appear to be a whole lot of people here, so I'm tempted to get out of stealth. What's behind? We're gonna have some more music that's probably gonna get me Oh, nothing. Copyright strike? Well, not a strike, a uh, claim. That's the word I'm looking for. All right, here we go. Well, 
Not sure I really want to talk to this lady, but all right. So that chase you in here, Cammy? Why do you ask? Heard nine saved your ass again. You think LaCroix would have stopped counting as many long enough to get your back, Jack? Uh, yeah, let's just go straight with number three. What's your problem? <laughs> oh, you want to know what my problem is? All right, I'll tell you what my problem is. You ready? You are my goddamn problem. Anyone who would lay it down for some cape in an ivory tower deserves what they get. <sighs> Love the expression on her face. I'm not sure how to respond to this. You want an alternative? Being here, that's a step in the right direction. I'm Damsel, den mother of these mothers, and one pissed bitch since the floor you did. You got the bitch part right. Go with number one. Don't even joke about bad blood at a time like this. Don't you know we've got a plague bearer around here? I upset you, how unusual. A plague bearer's a fool that doesn't care who they feed from. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. We can't get sick, but the kind can. And kindred that feed on them start spreading disease. And that gets sick, it's an epidemic. CDC's in town as we speak. I noticed. How do I get rid of one? Yeller? May sound cruel, but it's necessary. If someone puts together two and two as to the real cause of an outbreak of bloodborne diseases, guess what happens? So the plague bearer's gotta be found and put down. If the Camarilla really gives a damn, they'll help us out. Um. I'll think about doing it. I have another question first. I kind of want to say yes, but like, what is the right answer here? I'll do it because I'm bored. Um, I don't feel like they made a mess. Like, I feel like that's not really appropriate. All right, fine. We'll go with number one. One of our boys, ghouls, name's Paul, lives nearby in the Skyline Apartments. Been a stranger lately. Looked like death last time he was here. Said he didn't get bit, but maybe you can get more info out of him. All right, I'll go check it out. Wait, if Paul's not talking, you might want to start questioning the homeless pop. So many have been dying lately that it takes the city a few days to pick up the bodies. All right. All right, ask around. All right, and I never want to talk to you again. <laughs> but I'll have to, unfortunately, for that quest. Does the prince have you running today, boy? I'm not gonna go super aggressive. I'll go with number one. I was expecting you. Have some manners and don't wear out your welcome. I'm skeptical. Act up again, and I'll be the one showing your ashes to the door. All right. What's up? Looking for work. There's this girl who's been making a lot of noise lately. It's a real pain in the ass. She's a ghoul of this one Toreador creep who disappeared. What's her name? Her name is Pat. She hangs out in the clubs downtown. Pepper Nip, Peppermint Patty? Yeah, and act like she was everybody's best friend. It was all fun and games until her vampire sugar daddy stopped calling. Now she can't get her blood fixed and she ain't so fun no more. Um, what do you want me to do about it? Only time that mouth ain't blabbing is when it's sucking vampire blood. She's got to disappear. Do this, and we're keeping our little secret, you hear? Uh, we'll do number one. Have fun. 
I'd love to do this one myself, but I know it's silent. Just let me know when it's done. Sure you'd like to do it yourself. Um Yeah, sure. Hey, uh, ignoring you. Hey, Jack. Well, well, look you made it back in one piece. How it's Santa Monica, you know. Um, yeah, I didn't really get to do much sightseeing, mostly shoveling other people's shit, more or less. <laughs> I can't imagine you did. Probably too busy getting pushed around by every vampire with a week of seniority over you, am I right? You can say that. That's usually the way the story goes. Same old bullshit politics from when you were alive, huh? Don't it make you just want to rip somebody's spine out? What? You saying that's just me? <laughs> okay. You ever hear of the Elizabeth Dame? Why? Planning on visiting? Yes. Oh, really? Yeah, what's up, Jack? The sarcophagus. Did LaCroix tell you about the Ankaran sarcophagus? No, but I don't really trust him to tell me the truth anyway. I mean, he told me not to open it. That was about it. So technically, he told me of it, not about it. Yeah, well, maybe I should fill you in on the details. That sarcophagus is bad news. Kindred around the globe have been going batshit since it was discovered. Why? The word is, is there's an ancient asleep in there. One of the fathers, one of the vampires, that if you trace your lineage way back, there's a chance that it'd end up with him at the root. I'm probably going to butcher this, but I believe they're called the Antediluvians. I believe. Which makes them a third generation vampire. The second generation are all dead. Third generation are kind of like a myth, but potentially are still around. Uh, and they're so ancient that they're almost like deities and in, in as far as how powerful they are. You sleep all this whole time? Ancients don't just nap. They sleep whole ages away. And when they wake up, they're hungry. Although, fourth and fifth generation vampires are pretty powerful too, so. Um. So wake up and go hunting. It's more than that, kiddo. Most kindred think it's one of the signs of the end, the apocalypse. Every religion has their own version of it. Kindred call it Gehenna. And the way they tell it, it starts when the ancients rise to devour their children. I believe that's how it's spelled, uh, Leo. If I'm not saying it right, I really apologize. It's not one of those words you hear said out loud very, very often. Um. Is this for real? No one knows for sure, really. That's just a word that's been handed down through the ages. The Camarilla denies these ancients exist. That's what I'm saying. It's more like a myth. Yeah, they're supposed to be that ancient. I mean, the original vampire, the first generation, is is Cain. So, the second generation were all wiped out because they were, like, I think Cain himself killed them because they were too decadent. Uh, like, Cain killed all of them and, and their children. At least I think so. Something like that. So there are no second generation vampires still alive. At least that's the lore. Uh, Kane is supposed to be still alive. Maybe. Again, that's a myth. The third generation uh, is where you get most of your uh, clans from. All of the... All of the clans supposedly draw their lineage back up to a third generation vampire. So I hope I'm not butchering the lore too much, but that's what I remember. Okay. Well, it's crazy. I wonder if it's true. Well, kiddo, I guess you're going to be the one to find out. <laughs> hey, good luck. Try not to wake Grandpa Munster and kill the world, huh? <laughs> Will do. Okay, we'll go ask number one. Why is the prince sending me? Why did he send me to Santa Monica? We know the answer. He tried to get me killed in Santa Monica. 
because you never thought you'd make it back. If Nines didn't stand up for you in the courtroom, you would have been toast right there, man. Everybody knows that. That's debatable. But you could argue is true. It's really hard to tell LaCroix's motives sometimes, but he's definitely manipulative, but that's a venture for you. I don't care, why do you want to kill me? It's bullshit, Camarilla Law. You gotta get it approved before you sire anyone. Vampire population control, fashion crap. LaCroix wanted to look like the strong leader upholding the law. It's also used to try and stop the Thin Bloods from existing. And again, we're talking generational stuff here, so... Uh, as you go down, I guess, or like lower in number generation, the, the lower in number generation you are, so third, fourth, fifth, whatever, right? Those are really powerful vampires, but the further down you go, so you start getting to like 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, so on, the blood becomes thinner and thinner, and the power of the vampire kind of diminishes. But once you get to, I believe it's 14th? It's 14th or 15th generation, something like that. You start getting into what's called a thin blood territory. And uh, supposedly that's what you're going to be in Bloodlines 2, is you're going to be a, a thin blood starting off. There's ways to go up the ladder in generation. More or less how that works is you eat a vampire that is uh, higher up in the totem pole, more or less. So if you're... 13th generation and you eat a 9th generation vampire, you're going to go up a little bit. I don't think you're going to go all the way up to 9th, but you're going to go up like a little bit. So that's a way to go up. Granted, that's completely and totally illegal in vampire law to do that. So you're not supposed to do that, but it's something you can do. So it's one of those things where if you ask a vampire, hey, what generation are you? That's kind of not a very polite thing to say. Um, all right. Uh... So how come I'm still standing here? Public relations, man. Calculated risk. Ventura are born in a boardroom. When Nines called him out, LaCroix realized it was time to show a carefully measured dose of Camarilla compassion. That's why a lot of people have asked the question uh, with the new game, Bloodlines 2. How do you stop being a thin blood? Because it, the way that, that it has been presented to us is you start as a thin blood, and as a result... You don't have like full-fledged pow powers. You do. You're not part of a clan because every thin blood really has no clan because their blood is thinned out to the point where they don't have the attributes of a clan anymore. According to what we've read or they put out there, is you start out as a thin blood, but at some point you get assigned a clan. So the question is, how do you do that? And the only answer I know is you have to eat another vampire that is that is not a thin blood that is you know of a. How do you say it? Greater generation? I mean, technically it's a lower number. We'll just say greater and that greater power. Uh, yeah, you need a greater generation vampire than yourself. So is that something that happens in the game? Because if that's true, then that's a black stain on you. Uh, and there's ways of seeing that. So you, that could be a, a big problem for you. Uh, we'll see. Uh, you're not into public relations, Shaq? Yeah, man. It's called kicking ass and crushing the skulls of any asshole who steps on my toes. That seems to work. People dig it. Uh, is LaCroix afraid of nines? LaCroix is the boss of the Camarilla in L.A. That's it. <laughs> LaCroix is the boss. <laughs> That's rich. You're not part of the Camarilla? Free living dead, kiddo. A lot of people like to use the label Anarx. Whatever the hell that means. Anarx. That's got a nice kick to it, though, huh? <laughs> yeah. So the Anarx controlled California uh, in the past. And the Camarilla, in this game's timeline, the Camarilla showing up are, is much more of a recent thing. This is about the time I learned how to play Vampire the Masquerade. Slightly before this game came out, so I did have a background in Vampire the Masquerade before I played this game. And I believe with the lore that I read uh, at that time, that it was totally the Anarchs controlled uh, California, but they did have 
like the, the tensions of Camarilla and Sabat influence in California. I don't know how that's changed over the years. Because you've got, what, 10, 15 years of lore you're looking at? So a lot has probably changed. Okay. Um... Yeah, I feel like he's got the Napoleon thing going on. The Camarilla need us to buy into their bullshit for any of their laws to mean dick. Now, telling free living vampires they need to be ruled is a hard sell. So, the Camarilla baked up a play nicey plan. Show everyone how great they are, so we'll all just jump on board. It's not working? Kid, we've lived in California, some of us, for over a hundred years, and we've kicked the Camarilla's ass out of town before. Seems like every time they smell blood, they're back trying to take over. Uh, I don't really want to ask too much about anybody else. So, I'm out of here. As much as I love Jack, I don't want to have too much exposition dump. I know RPGs can really get into that kind of stuff. But I don't want to get too bogged down in, in it. I kind of already know the lore because i played this game multiple times. Uh, and again, I have a background in Vampire the Masquerade uh, as far as, you know, the role-playing game. So I have a semblance of an idea. All right. I mean, let's go talk to the Edgelord here with his Edgelord stance. Leaning up against the wall like that. We just have to make fun of him a little bit for that first. You now let's talk up. to him. Good. Here's what I got to tell you. And so, you know, I don't lecture. I don't rap. I'm no bureaucrat. I'm just a guy out of nowhere came to be involved in something 500 times bigger than you and me. Man, you so cool. I want to say not another goddamn speech. I really want to say it. Do we say it? Do we say it? What? Hang on a sec. Shut up! As I was saying, all this, the life we leave, it's a mess. It's older than this city, this country. Who knows how long this shit's gone on. Wait, what the hell was that? <laughs> How was that? <sighs> His lectures, man, it... I'm sure for some people, this is like... Nines Rodriguez is cool, and you, and you, and you, you dig what he has to say, but he comes off like such a pretentious ass, asshole. Like, more so than the prince. I could buy the prince as a backstabbing, uh, like, egomaniac. This guy? Uh... I promise you'll be out of here by morning. You've got a right to know the score. The Camarilla, this is the short of it. They operate a lot like a pyramid scheme. There's a bunch of these old timers at the top with God only knows what plots in mind. They lose their power, they die. They sired more to carry out their plans. And looking for a little power than those kindred sired for their own schemes and so on and on and on. It hurts my head just thinking about the mess. And it works out to exist. Only a few people at the top have any real power. Communism, ho! Sorry. Uh. Can I go now? Kid, I don't give a fuck if you go or stay. Thought I'd give you a fighting chance. If you want to go, get lost. Ah. <laughs> uh. Goodbye. I don't really honestly think he has a quest for me, so I don't give a shit, but this character rubs me the wrong way. Again, I know he's supposed to be this cool dude and everybody's supposed to be on board with him, but he just comes across as just too much for me. Jack, on the other hand, he's going to be a good representative of the Anarchs. This is how the Anarchs should be represented. This guy. No, thanks. Anybody anything interesting in the bathroom? I think somebody needs to clean that towel up. Ooh. Okay then. In here too? Well, at least we've got condoms. Oh, you can go out this way. Cool. Now we're the cool dudes. It's more mafia. 
Well, I'm, I'm saying his his stance was like uh, like uh, equality for the vampires. Get rid of the old the guys on top. Make everybody equal again. I, I think that's like kind of the anarch thing, honestly. But in a way, he's a boss of the anarchs. I know if you said that to his face, he'd want to slap you, but. Yeah. The whole idea of the Anarchs is they're, they're not supposed to be organized. That's why they're called Anarchs. <laughs> yeah. I guess preacher types have always rubbed me the wrong way. It's kind of like where I'm at with his character. I mean, it's not, I'm not saying it's a bad character, and I'm sure there's people that like his character, but just for me, I'm not really into, into that kind of thing. Yeah, so his little area is, is over here. There's the uh, indicator. I, I forget what his little thing was. Is like the midnight sun or something, but that's supposed to be a little sign. All right, well, now we got the fun par part of trying to decipher his little magical maze. Uh, I'm sure there's a pattern to this, but we'll just go... Oh, hello. Yeah. I think this gives you a little insight into something you're going to meet later. Um, so... The Regent of Chicago. Gargoyles! This isn't going to come up at all, I'm sure, right? During the medieval conflict with the... That word? This is one of the clans of uh, vampires. I'm going to have a hard time even attempting to pronounce it. So everybody pronounce it for yourself. And I won't I even try. <laughs> uh, Land Tremere fell further into secret blood magics and created a race of protectors known as gargoyles. Since their inception, gargoyles have been used as scouts, warriors, and sentries. Gargoyles are monsters, vampires by virtue of the blood and flesh through which they are created. They are no more than the detritus of other clans, given a second chance to serve their premier creators. Unfortunately, many have wrongly come to view their service as slavery and have fled their masters in search of some delusional utopia. Most escaped gargoyles live in isolation, preferring solitude to even the company of their own kind. And we have homunculi. For the most, many, uh, mani this word, and mindless tasks, many Tremere create what is called a homunculus. These are mindless creatures which take many forms, winged, many legged, or otherwise. Homunculi are unfailingly loyal, but their appearance makes them a serious threat to breaking the masquerade. So Mitzi? Yeah, I think I've heard that said before, but that is just a not easy word for me to say. Okay. Was there anything else in that room? Not that I'm on that subject. I don't think there was. Oh, that was easy. So that's a magical maze, and it's if you don't go the right way, it, it it can lead you back the way you came. It's quite possible with the more recent patches, they've made that less annoying. But in the original game, it was really easy to get lost in that maze. So this guy strikes me as somebody that would is probably a very ancient, relatively speaking, vampire. I don't know. I don't know how what generation I'd pin it on him, but just like there's a lot of uh, supposed to be like stereotypes of like what would be like a, an older vampire. They tend to wear outdated clothing. Check. Uh, less to be. They tend to be less human. His uh, blue pallor kind of gives that away. Um, you know. Greetings, Neonate. 
Might I assume you received my invitation? I have been looking forward to meeting you for quite some time. It's like the kind of the curse of a vampire is the eventuality that the beast takes over. It's quite possible you'll be able to, to fight it for a long period of time, but over the years, it becomes harder and harder to keep your humanity going. Just because, just how long you've lived, all your, your friends have died and left. I mean, all your, your mortal friends, all your mortal contacts are die dead and gone. You know, it just, just through the act of being a vampire, feeding on other mortals, it, it becomes harder and harder to keep your humanity intact. So older vampires tend to struggle with that. More so than younger vampires, just through the, through the time they've been alive. Strauss, Maximilian Strauss. I am the regent of this chantry. Welcome. Uh, okay. The word on the street. Let me give you some advice, young one. Your survival in kindred society will often depend on your ability to find out yourself what is going on around you. Remember that well. Now, as a Camarilla, admitted Camarilla lapdog, this guy is the guy that, um, I put more trust in. One of the reasons why I actually considered playing Tremere. Now, granted, you're going to have vampire politics no matter what you do, but... This guy, out of all the Camarilla, he's probably the most honest and forward with you. I appreciate the advice. As for what is going on here in downtown, the word on everyone's lips, kindred or kind, seems to be epidemic. So he's asking me to do the same thing that What's-Her-Face told me to do. Damsel, I think her name was? Yeah, why? What's going on? It seems that disease has been spreading at an alarming rate throughout the downtown population. Considering our particular appetites, the local kindred are more than concerned about these developments. Interesting. Yes, indeed. My opinion is that the local anarchs are responsible for these outbreaks. Their precipitous indulgence of certain passions often leads to such things. Ergo, their need for the watchful eye of the Camarilla. Yeah, Nosferatu are staunch, staunch uh, members of the Camarilla. I, I, yeah, you're right. Um, you should think that I'm already looking good for the end. Okay. Let's see what he has to say about the Camarilla, because I feel like we're going to get a more frank opinion from him. Yeah, this this is one of my. I mean, I like a lot of the characters in this game, but this is one of my favorite characters. But again, that's coming from a Camarilla lapdog. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's see what he has to say. Camarilla. It is merely a kindred sect that exists to protect its members from the outside world. There are specific codes of behavior that we abide by in order to ensure the continuance of our species. It is nothing more and nothing less. Okay. I don't know if there's anything else we have to talk to him about, but let's just see. Uh, maybe I could look into the epidemic for you. Hmm. An interesting proposition. If you succeed in finding the cause of this epidemic and putting an end to it, I will compensate you appropriately for your efforts. Okay. What's in it for me? I will ponder the nature of your payment while you are gone. Believe me, I will treat you fairly, Neonate. And your service to the Camarilla won't be forgotten. Um. All right, I'll take care of it. Very well. All right, later, buddy. So this area is more important if you're of the of his clan. If you're if you're a, if you're part of the Tremere, so. Trying to retrace my footsteps. I think I went this way. There we go. So this is where you get a pad if you are in his clan. So Nosferatu and the Tremere are the two that get a unique place to go. Everyone else gets the same downtown apartment. 
which we can take a look at later. I'm not sure if we can actually go in the apartment room itself. I don't remember, but we can take a look at it. Yep, Leo, uh, let me show it to you. Oop. Now we've got a very, very interesting outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what the next tier is going to look like, but yeah, we're starting to get, uh... Again, it's like a gimp suit. Alrighty, let's get out of here. So, so far, we have two quests, right? Uh, well, that's not true. We also have the bounty... bounty hunter thing. Um... Carnival of Death will come up here. But we've got the epidemic, which th that's seen here twice. And then um, we can go back to the Prince for the Elizabeth Dane, but we're going to do that much later because there's a lot of other stuff we have to do here. So this one's probably the easiest to do, but there's many layers to this of ways we can accomplish this quest. Well, you got a couple extra leather straps, right? <laughs> And the most important part is the Batman fins. Did we see? Did you see that? See the Batman fins? I mean, it works for Batman. It offers him a huge amount of protection. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that's why he uses it, right? <laughs> All right, where were we? Um, I might check on the bounty hunter thing first. We'll see. There's also a quest that I know of that we haven't gone to yet. Like female armor and JRPGs. Yeah, let's see. Alrighty. I'm trying to remember where Stanley Gimbel's place is. I think it's just off to the left here. Could be mistaken on that. I'm pretty sure it's in the downtown area. Unless I'm misremembering that. Is it in Santa Monica? Hold on. Now I'm not sure. It actually might be in Santa Monica. Maybe we could have already done that quest. Yeah, you know, the more I think about that, it might actually be in Santa Monica. So we're going to do a little bit of a road trip here back to Santa Monica. Yeah, the armor for the female characters in this game are pretty interesting. Especially the Malkavian female. Her outfits are something else. Yeah, so I think I misremembered. I thought this one quest was something you did in downtown. Actually, it is in Santa Monica. Yeah. So that was just me misremembering. Because Gimbal's place is all the way off to the one side. Uh, not sure which thingamajig we want. Probably E. What's 15? Yeah, Gimbal's prosthetics. There you go. Not really. I just misremembered that one. All right, well, we'll go beat up on uh, Gimbal. Okay, officer. Don't mind me. So we might be able to get through this fairly easily because uh, we're a little further along in the game than I think we were intended to be by the time we get to this quest. How are we doing our experience? Do I bump up melee because I know I'm going to have to fight again here? We couldn't get a book on melee, but I don't honestly remember if that's something that happens or not. And at this stage, we've already been to two vendors. It's possible we'd find a book somewhere, but I don't think we're going to find one in Gimbal's place. How Again, how much would that cost us? That cost us three, so it's not even that expensive. And it wouldn't hurt to have a point in security either. We're going to get that lock picking up. We don't need it yet. 
So I don't feel like there's a point in using the point. I didn't really mean to just say that that like that way, but buddy, you're kind of in my way. Don't freak out on me. Yeah. Yes. May I help you? Um. Spoke with you a little while ago, even though at this point it's probably been days. Yes. Oh, May I help I miss. You? I might have uh, hit the wrong button. All right, this part's gonna be fun. Hello there. Oh, I thought you were. I mean, um, <clears throat> I didn't realize. Um, uh, I don't do plastic surgery, I'm afraid. Maybe you should try speaking with someone down at the clinic instead. What? But I'm here for the modeling position. Oh, you are. Well, I suppose your limbs are in decent shape. Well, at least some of them are, I think. Oh, bother it all. I'm sure we'll make do. Good, who are you? Oh, yes, forgive me. My name is Gimble. Stanley Gimble. But, oh, dear. Let us dispense with formalities. You can call me Stan. Uh, tell me about me? yourself. Oh, I'm just trying to make things a little easier for those who find themselves uh, disadvantaged. Giving a helping hand, you might say. A leg up. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody clever, that one. Um, you seem disadvantaged yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, you mean the arm? Yes, uh, uh, that's an interesting story. If you've got the time for one. I'd love to hear it, Stan. Well, you might say I have a certain love affair with the human anatomy. An obsession, really. Prosthetics seemed a natural occupation in which to... Uh, Focus my enthusiasm, as it were. And your arm? Well, I came to realize that I would never truly reach mastery in prosthetics without knowing what it was like to have to use one. In other words, he cut off his own arm. Go on. And so I decided, quite out of the blue, actually, to cut off my own arm. My work, as you can well imagine, has quite improved since then. Now that's dedication! Ah, an eager participant! Very good. Just give me a few moments to get my equipment ready, and then come on in and we'll get started. He's bonkers, guys! Now, frankly, I don't know if he's a vampire or if he's just a crazy person. I always was, like, of the opinion that he was a vampire, but now that I think about it, I think he's just a wacko. Well, that's okay. We can deal with that. Let's see these prices. Mannequin arms and other parts, twenty six fifty. Whole mannequins on sale, one twenty five. Ah, uh, varies per customer. Crash test dummies. Wow, that's a lot of money. Amputees must wait up front. So mostly this area is just meant to be creepy. Get the cheese. Okay, I guess. Anything in the thing? See, this is one of the things that always made me believe he was a vampire. Is he's got blood packs in the thing, but that could just be because of other things that he may do. No, I would say not that sanitary. Um, do we have our knife? Okay, let's just, just, you know, in case. In case we may need it. His dad is a clown. Okay, I guess there's... Uh... Okay. Looks like he put somebody on that bed and then lit him on fire. Just not worry about that. Okay then. He's got quite a, uh, a lot of real estate here. Mm-hmm. Oh, come on, go through the door. <laughs> All right, hold on one second. Need a little bit of a quick save. 
Did I spend that point? I did not. Melee. For some reason, I feel like we're going to need it. Hello there, good sir. Huh? Oh, hey, help! You gotta get me out of here, man. This guy's a freaking nut job. Who, Gimbal? Oh, Gimbal? Yeah, Gimbal. That guy's been taking pieces off of me and McGee over here for the last three days. He's crazy, man. Freaking crazy. Okay, how do I open the door? I guess we could have used that ability a while ago. Oh. I wanted to see what happened when he died to see if he like did the whole blade effect because that would tell us he's a vampire for sure. Fortunately, we missed that. Ah! Oh God! Gimbal got to you too? Man, that's inhumane. Looks like he sliced up your face and sewed it back together in the wrong order. Birthmark. You're Carson, right? Kilpatrick sent me. He did? Oh man, that's solid. I owe that guy big. I hope I can figure out a way to get him back for this. Got some work for you. What? Oh no, man. No, no, no. Not for me anymore. Look at my hand. Gimbal took my trigger finger for a trophy. I'm all through with this business. I hate to leave Arthur in a lurch, but that's just the way it is. Uh, okay, I understand. Thanks again. Don't worry, I'll take care of old Stumpy here. Yeah, I better come back with the police. Alright, not before, of course, I get to loot the place. What's this? A severed arm. That's lovely. I don't think that guy's still alive. Um, let's take a look at that severed arm. Ooh, it requires a lot of melee combat skill. Well, well, we'll keep a hold of it because, frankly, it, uh... Is it even any good? <laughs> I mean, we might use it just because it's fun. Oh, it's not very good at all. Again, we'll keep a hold of it. I don't think you can sell it for obvious reasons. Anything interesting in here? No. He needs uh, to do some laundry, apparently. Let's look at use some bed sheets. And some a little less crazy. Granted, he doesn't really need to worry about that too much anymore. Alrighty. We're done. How many how much experience did we get there for that? A couple points? Maybe one point? Uh, we still have to follow up by going to um, the Kilpatrick is his name. Get some monies. Alrighty. And I think he's gonna give me a further quest, and that's downtown. See, that's where I got confused, is I forgot. You wanna go out B, huh? Go that way and then take a left. Uh, need a little bit of blood, so we'll eat on a munch on a rat with the P1. What's shaking? Found Carson? Ain't coming back? What do you mean he ain't coming back? 
His trigger finger got cut off. Man, that's a tough one. Bounty hunter ain't no good without his trigger finger. Well, hell, that really leaves me in hot water, boy. Gonna cost old Arthur real good. Uh, sorry, but can you oh, pay me now? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, here you are. How much did you pay me? Thanks, you were saying? I got this guy with a sheet a mile long, put in on three warrants. His girlfriend put up for the bond, and now he missed the court date. I can't get in touch with either of them. Want a job? What do I have to do? Well, it won't be much of a job since you ain't licensed and all, but until I can get me another bounty hunter, I need you to find out if this guy skipped town or what. Do you want me to find yeah, if he's there or not? No body attachment or nothing. Just find out if he's here or where he went. I'll pay you. Deal? Yes. Sure, I could do that. Great, great. All right. The guy's name is Mike Durbin. Goes by the name Muddy. His girlfriend put up for his bond. She lives over there above Tripp's pawn shop. Her name is Marion Murrieta, but I haven't been able to get in touch with her. Oh, uh, just head over to her place? Right. Mary Ann Murrieta, in them crappy places above the pawn shop. Find Excuse me? where the hell Muddy is, where is he going, whatever. But be careful, you're not licensed, and if anything bad goes down, I don't know you. You hear me? Yeah, I hear you. All right, come back when you got some info. Thanks in advance. This is super easy. Pretty much go to the apartments. We've already unlocked that door, so... Just go in there, pop in. Come on back. So this is all stuff we could have done earlier. I just, I forgot. It's this quest. You can't go, you can follow up through it beyond what he tells you to do. And that's the part that's in downtown and I kind of forgot. Uh, this is actually important because it does lead up to another quest. So... It's good that we're coming back and doing this. Alrighty. We can chain a lot of these things together that are in downtown. Anything in my... my area? Alright, no. Also check my emails again. Just... There's your key as well, if this was locked. And it looks like they have changed it. Because in the game originally, this key was there from the very beginning. Um, and this is where perception skill would come in, because that would have a halo if I had good perception skill, but... I know it's there, so it's there. So if I didn't have this already unlocked, that would have been the way to get in. We've already been in here, so we already know. Cleared out. Hey, Mayor. It's Mike. Look, I gotta head downtown for a few days, maybe longer. If Reno calls, tell him to meet me down there. We got something to discuss, apparently. I'll be at Milton's place in the Skyline Lofts 2A. Sorry, baby. I'll explain everything later. And apparently he's Elvis Presley. There you have it. Now that's all I need to do for Arthur. But we can continue to follow up on it, I believe. I hope I'm remembering that correctly. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. We'll go talk to Arthur and then we're done with this town. For the meantime. Because I think after he pays you, you don't think Stanley was a vampire? Okay, I mean... As I said, I have no proof for that theory. The only reason why I ever thought that was because of the blood bag in the fridge, but that's easily explained as just he's cutting on people and he needs the blood bag to keep him alive or whatever his stick is. Did you miss me? Judging by the way the board put up, put up, I Hey there, Slick. slick. Okay, info about Muddy. So what'd you find out about Muddy? He said it fled somewhere downtown. All right, then. I'll have to call in some bounty hunters to help me find Muddy and a couple of other jumpers. Thanks for all your help. 
You can take me in American oh, dollars. Right, right, right. Sorry about that. Here you are. Thanks. See you around then. If you ever find yourself or a loved one locked up, please call. Now that's all from him, but we can follow up on that independently. So we don't have to come back and see him. At least I don't think so. We probably could. Oh, I meant to check the emails, damn it. Should we talk to Tongue now? I mean, we've done more. I mean, we're already here. What the hell? I have a feeling it's going to be more of the same where he's not ready for me. But I need to check on him every so often because I don't know if it's his quest or the quest from like the main Nosferatu place that gets you that. What do you need? Those about murders the are color. definitely the work of Kindred. Probably some Kate of getting revenge on everyone who made fun of him in high school. Once the sheriff tracks this guy down, they're going to make one hell of an example of him. Forget actually what this honestly means. They're going to say... Kata for just riffraff vampires who don't know anything about vampire society. Don't know their clan. Oh, that's right. Vampires. What I suspect you were perilously close to becoming if LaCroix hadn't intervened. All right. What do you need? Like what? All right. I don't think he has a quest for me yet, but we might as well talk on that. And the talk about the serial killer is actually relevant. We'll be getting a little bit more into that once we head into downtown. That one takes a little while to get through, if I remember correctly. At least there's a couple steps to it. Oh, we're well over the time that I normally take a break, so uh, I'm going to head back to downtown, and then we're going to take a 10-minute break. Um, yeah. It was a while ago that I noticed it was almost 2 o'clock, and now I'm noticing it like 25 minutes later. All right, we'll go to downtown, and we'll, we'll do our break here. But we got a lot to take in, a lot of quests and stuff to do. There's also something we want to look into pretty close to where we dropped off and everything. But let's go ahead and just do our hard save here.